Hey, pilots! Now, I know I said I was gonna do the sharpshooter next, but, well, hey, I lied. I did the brawler instead. You can pause here for the, me the mech stats, but yes! The big, the burly, brawler! Okay, I'm done. <laughs> but yeah, the, uh, I'm gonna be showing you guys the brawler here today. It's the heaviest heavy mech out of them all, but... It takes a little bit of getting used to, which is why I kind of held it off, but compared to the Vanguard, it's got quite a bit of differences, but yeah, I'll be teaching you guys how to brawl, so no worries there. Alright, let's get going. Okay, now, if you're here and you have not actually checked out my Vanguard video, I highly suggest that you do because it'll give you a good foundation on the C-Class mechs and how they work, and so I don't have to completely explain all the very basics of C-Class mechs again. And so I can just stick to how you want to pilot the brawler. So, uh, and I w and I'm going to refer a lot to that back to my Vanguard video. So I do suggest you check it out so you can get a better grip on what it is I will be talking about. But anyways, on to the brawler now. Now, the brawler is the fat kid on the block. It is the heaviest mech in the game, and it is also the slowest mech in the game. So, you're gonna have a big speed reduction if you're coming from piloting big uh, B classes or A classes, especially A classes. Because A classes are really speedy, C classes are not, so you're gonna have to really get used to being slower. And as I said in my Vanguard video about positioning and how uh, important that is, just you know, remember, always keep that in mind with the brawler. Positioning is everything. You want to be at the right place at the right time. You do not want to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. Otherwise, the brawler he will not escape. He is just too slow. Now, positioning is everything inside of the brawler due to how slow it is. You're not going to be able to chase people down or run away if you end up in a very bad spot. So, remember where you are at all times. Situational awareness is very, very much key. And also, keep support around you. Even if it's only a partner, I've done it before where I could hold a missile silo against three or four enemies with just one person backing me up, whether it be an infiltrator, a technician, hell, an assault, another brawler. As long as I have at least one, another person for support, and I'm in a very good position where the enemy team cannot ignore me, then my brawler is doing its job very, very well. However, the, the concept of doing this is very, very hard, because you're, you're probably used to chasing people down inside of your assault mech, or maybe an A-class mech, and that's not what you, have, you can do inside of a brawler. Brawler, you gotta let the fight come to you in most cases. And uh, this mech is classified as a defense mech, and it really is. It's a defensive heavy mech, and it excels at that. But a little bit more on the piloting a bit later. I'm going to get into the weapons really quickly. And so the starting weapons with this are the flak cannon and then the tow rocket. Now, while the tow rocket's really familiar, you're all familiar with how it works and the airburst and what have you, the flak cannon is usually where most new guys have a bit of trouble using because they're not used to using the really slow-firing shotguns on Hawken. They're most they're used to using like the, the submachine cannon or the assault rifle, which is why I recommend you get the Vanguard first rather than the Brawler. So, because uh, even though it seems like a little minor thing, but trust me, this flak cannon, unless you know how to use it right, it's gonna be a little bit difficult for you to use. I'll talk a little bit more on the flak cannon in a while, but I also just want to get the ability out of the way. The ability is called Fortify Turrets, but this actually may be subject to change because on the forums. They said, because they reworked the Grenadier special ability, and they also said that they might be reworking the Brawlers. So, uh, while I give you this information for the ability, just bear in mind in the future, it may not apply. So, I will do a follow-up video in case that happens. But what it is, it's called Fortified Turret. If you see my Vanguard video, it's pretty much like that. You go into a turret mode, but instead of 60% damage reduction, you only get a 10% damage reduction. And so, you take 90% of the normal damage from the front, but then in the back, you take 120% damage, because there's that 20% bonus damage. Now, what do you think that defensive bonus is pitiful. Why even use the turret mode? Well, it heals you at the same time. It's kind of like uh, you, you heal yourself while you're inside of that turret mode. Now, I will say that this turret mode is kind of weak, so I don't recommend using it very, very much. There's only a couple cases where like I, I'm trying to, you know, survive in certain areas and try to, you know, stay away. And like, uh, I deployed repair charge right there and did the turret mode right over it so I can heal myself up really quickly without having to put my weapons away and like, you know, initiate a repair sequence. That's usually how I use the turret. I don't actually use it to fight people. But, I mean, you can do it, but it's just, it's not as viable as uh, using the turret mode in the Vanguard is. So, I don't recommend using the turret mode as the turret mode. I recommend to use it as uh, extra healing when you need to. I'm just gonna say this now, the Black Cannon is my personal favorite on the Brawler, and I love using it because of the high burst damage. Fat Scout for the win. But because of the high burst damage, most new players 
it's very alien to them using the flak cannon, so I'm going to teach you how to properly use this weapon. As I said, most new guys are much more accustomed to use high sustain damage weapons like the assault rifle or Vulcan, but I'm going to teach you how to use burst weapons. Generally, most how most new players are trying to play the brawler is just go into turret mode and then stand out in the open, you know, trying to chase people down. No, that's not how you want to play the brawler. The brawler, you're going to want to find a good place with a decent amount of cover, and you're going to play a, a dangerous game called peekaboo when you're using the flat cannon. And what that involves is usually you you poke yourself out, you take a shot at your enemies, and then just duck and then dodge back behind cover like you see me do right here. I shoot and I dodge and then shoot shoot dodge and then whenever I shoot I usually dodge back behind cover so I don't get so I can escape retaliation that's how I play peekaboo and that's the best way to use utilize high burst weapons because they can shoot do all their damage in one little tiny shot rather than having to keep a person in front of you so you can shoot dodge behind cover so you don't get shot back at and also one other tip with the flat cannon don't hold it down to, uh, and fire it full auto not only will it just cause you to overheat a lot you'll probably miss quite a bit because you're not going to be able to land all your shots. Personally, I, my accuracy with this thing is atrocious whenever I try to fully auto-fire it, so I always click every single time I want to shoot. It just improves my accuracy by a lot, and so I highly recommend that's what you do with this weapon. But other than that, yeah, just learn. With, inside of cover, it's great weapon, but you know, outside of cover too, it's still usable, but just be very careful because uh, machine guns will be able to tear you up very easily when you're outside of cover. But yeah, that's the flat cannon, and we're going to move on to the next weapon right now. So, the unlockable alternate weapon for the Brawler is the S.A. Hawkins, which is actually present on the Sharpshooter. Now, you would think this is a bit of an odd combination. However, I've actually found it to be quite powerful, and this is what I'll tell you why. It's because normally, as you can tell by the flat cannon, I mean, it's a shotgun. It's for close range combat only, and, you know, how slow the Brawler is, a lot of the times you got to wait for the fight to come to you and to be able to use the flat cannon well. I'm not saying the brawler is very bad, I'm just saying it's not as powerful in team deathmatch because of how much everyone's moving around. Uh, but the SA Hawkins is a little bit better for that because it has a lot more range to it, so you don't have to be inside that, you know, close range because you, you want to chase people down because this thing actually does have quite a bit of range on it. However, with the sharpshooter you are able to scope in and get much more accuracy out of it. On the brawler though, you gotta remember you can't scope in. But yeah, it does output quite a bit of sustain damage. Like I said, it is quite powerful and I like it on the brawler and I actually was quite surprised by how well it actually uh, works with the brawler when you stay at range with it. Uh, as I said, you want to stay at range with this weapon. It's not meant for close range. It, this will make you a mid-range brawler and it actually gels a little bit nicer with the turret mode as it currently is. But like I said, the turret mode is probably going to change so don't think it'll stay here forever but if it, it does happen to stay then yeah it does work nicely. The turret mode is a bit more useful here because people won't be able to shoot you quite as easily and it, the brawler will do a little bit better in the open with this weapon when you keep people out of range. Now what the SA Hawkins offers with the brawler is a bit more range as I said before with, in terms of defense. Now again it's kind of not my favorite because uh, I don't like how because I know it's hit scan and like but it's also a sustained weapon and uh, and how the sustained weapon works is like it, like I said, it doesn't really fit quite with well how the brawler works. I mean, it's still a really great weapon nonetheless, but you know, brawler is kind of meant for up close and personal defense, and like is, even like with the tow rocket, because like, like when you try to go to medium range, that becomes harder to use your tow rocket because you have to lead it more, and because of the hit scan nature of the SA Hawkins, you uh, you have to keep your ridicule right on target and so they usually conflict they conflict a little bit in that sense however you know if you get used to it it's not too big of a deal but i don't really kind of like it because of that i feel like the flat cannon and the toe can and the toe cannon <laughs> the toe rocket uh they just gel a lot better uh that's just my personal preference but like i said the sa hawkins is still a very viable choice and um, yeah, it's it's not a bad pick if you'd like if you'd like a much more of a sustained output on your brawler and if you want a bit more range on it. Now, obviously, the SA Hawkins it probably proves the most useful on uh, kind of open maps like this, uh, like bunker where there's you know uh, there's plenty of space, there's a pretty wide open map, and also maps like Last Eco it'll definitely help there. And uh, again, it, it is a defensive mech because you know like I said, you're not going to be able to move around very fast and uh, you gotta kinda let the fight come to you. So positioning does become really key, and usually you'll see me try to, I usually try to take high points whenever, like, uh, you know, up on a hill or, uh, you know, up up high, because, you know, high points it gives you a lot more visibility and makes it a little bit easier for you to pick out targets and, you know, uh, start, you know, 
raking away at them. However, uh, yeah, but like I said, the weakness of this gun is that up close you're not going to be able to output as much damage as you would be able to with the uh, flat cannon or uh, the pointy Vulcan, which is the uh, prestige weapon, which I'll show in a little while, but yeah. Just remember with the brawler uh, that you are pretty slow and that uh, and if someone tries to get away from you and you don't oh, don't really try to chase them too much because if you overextend yourself and you end up in the midst of the enemy team, like I said, you're too slow to get away. So you're kind of screwed at that point. So best strategy with a brawler is to try to stay by your teammates and uh, pick a place that you know uh, if you're familiar with the map. Just pick a place that you know you can kind of hold down and defend fairly well and try to stay around there. That's definitely the best way I'd play the brawler. And like I said, like I prefer the brawler for uh, more objective-based maps because uh, you know it, it just becomes a bit more easier because I can just position myself on a silo and position it on a or position myself on the AA and siege, and then I can you know just keep my enemy off that point. That's the whole point of defensive mechs. Is not so much to go ahead and grab kills, but they're there to make like if the enemy is assaulting a point, the defensive mechs are basically there to chase them off and keep them from taking the point. Not so much like chasing them away from the point and then trying to secure a kill. No, that's more for like a light mech or an assassin class. So just remember, the brawler, your duty is to just protect the point that you're on. So don't try to chase people down. Okay, as you can probably tell, the clips have switched by now and this is the prestige weapon, the point D Vulcan, which is accessed at rank 5. Now, uh, the play style for this weapon is pretty similar to the flat cannon, and I, you really don't need me to explain how to use the bulk. I mean, you've used it on a lot of other mechs, so you're pretty familiar with all the things about the spin up and about its heat generation and all that. But yeah, if anything, it does play pretty kind of similarly to a Vulcan brawler. Uh, no, wait, <laughs> obviously it plays similarly to a Vulcan brawler, but it plays similarly to a flak brawler in that, you know, it is a close range brawler. But uh, the point D Vulcan on the brawler it has a few uh, things that I kind of personally don't really like about it. But, you know, I'll get into that a little bit later, but uh, as far as using the Vulcan on the Brawler, this one gives your Brawler a little bit more of uh, uh, out, out, uh, out in the open type of uh, defensive power and presence, really. Because the Flat Cannon, like I said, is best utilized with cover and learning how to play around corners and things like that. But the Vulcan will give you a bit more uh, uh, ability to fight out in the open. And if that's how you like to fight, you like to fight out in the open, just, you know, slugging it out uh, with people, just, you know, uh, I don't know how to explain it, just being in their face all the time and uh, uh, just filling them with lead, then the Vulcan is probably what you're going to want on your brawler. However, just be careful of heat generation. And uh, like I said, uh, with any other Vulcan videos, and also in the brawler in general, because the brawler's overheat recovery time is six seconds. So you do really, really do not want to overheat on the brawler, because, like I said, you know, most cases it's about only about like four seconds, maybe five on some of the other ones, but it's a whole six seconds inside of a brawler where you're really slow and you're a big whopping target. If you cannot output damage and fire back at your enemies, you're just asking to be killed at that point. So remember to really, really watch your heat. However, like with the SA Hawkins and the Vulcan, I feel like heat management becomes a lot harder to accomplish with the, these weapons. That's why, and there's another reason why I prefer the flat cannon, because the flat cannon, you know, it's a burst weapon. It's like I, it's like I shoot it once, and then there we go. I did my damage. Like I don't, I don't feel pressured to have to like you know keep the mouse held down and generate a whole bunch of heat. So I, I personally like it for that, and also it's just the, the burst nature of the flat cannon, which is what I prefer, because I actually am that guy who will play peekaboo all day long and make it and just, you know, be that uh, annoying person who you just can't seem to hit. I, I like doing that even in my brawler. And a lot of the other uh, higher ranking brawlers that I know are like uh, higher ranking players who use the brawler, they all say that the, fl the flat cannon is their, is their preferred weapon, so just putting it out there. I'm not saying the Vulcan is useless and I'm not saying the SA Hawkins is not is not viable at times. In fact, the SA Hawkins, like I said, is for much more ranged maps, although, you know, much more ranged maps you might want to uh, stick with like a rock, might go, go with a Rocketeer or something like that, but you know, if you like the Brawler and you just, you know, like I've said, it all comes down to personal preference and your play style. That's what determines which weapon you're going to like. I personally, like I said, I like the uh, flat cannon for the burst damage, but if you prefer the sustained damage and the up-close nature, then the Vulcan is the thing for you. And if you like a bit more range, then you can uh, use the uh, the SA Hawkins. And, but if you want burst damage at a medium range, I'm sorry, that you can't find that on the Brawler. But yeah, if 
burst damage up close is the uh, flat cannon, sustain damage up close is the Vulcan, and then sustain damage at a medium range would be the SA Hawkins. And again, play it defensively. But again, the reason why I don't really like the Vulcan on the Brawler is because of how slow it is, and usually it's going to be hard to get most people into the uh, into the optimum range for your Vulcan. And also, the turning speed of the of uh, the heavy mechs also makes it a little bit harder to keep up with light mechs if they're you know buzzing around your head. And so that's why I don't really like it. I mean, which is why I prefer the the flat cannon because then I can go behind cover, and so I kind of have a better idea of where the uh, Light mechs will be, and so, you know, they're either, like, behind the wall, and they're not going to be swarming around me, so I have a much better idea of where they are, and I can still effectively deal out damage while playing peekaboo with that, while playing peekaboo with the, with the flat cannon, so that's why I prefer it, but yeah, but, you know, Vulcan Brawlers are still some dangerous uh, guys out there, like, they can easily scare people off the AA, I mean, it's a friggin' Vulcan, for crying out loud, and it's a Brawler, is like, the heaviest mech in the game, if you see one of those things coming at you, people are just going to run, so, like I said, but, uh, you know, it's good as a spearhead in, in times where it needs to be called for, but like I said, this thing specializes in defense. But, you know, if, you're, you're, if you have your team right behind you, feel free to lead the charge in, because you are a heavy mech and you can take some of the aggro away from your team and really be able to help push in. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention. For the love of God, don't try to fly in your brawler. This thing is, is already slow enough on the ground, and in the air, it's even slower. But yeah, things are wrapping up. I'm gonna quickly go over my items and internals. I still use the shield, the hologram, and the uh, repair charge because I'm just gonna keep it all the same on my mechs just because, it's, like I said, they're determined by playstyle. And also the internals, I have that as the same as well. The basic deflectors, the evasive device, and the air compressor. Yes, I use the air compressor on my brawler, but that's more from doing maneuvers in case I need to, you know, go down platforms and whatnot. That It's a little bit different. I'll explain in another video if I go over internals, but... Uh, yeah, that was my brawler tutorial, and I hope you guys enjoyed it, you learned how to brawl correctly, and yeah, this is Soldier Hobbs signing off, I'll see you next time for the sharpshooter, for sure, alright?